I mentioned in the previous video, I wanted to do a repair video for you guys. So I purchased this uh, HP E3611A power supply from eBay. It was marked as not working by the seller and immediately after receiving it I powered it up and noticed it was working perfectly fine. I have thought about this and uh, I have a theory about why this power supply is working while it was marked as not working by the seller on eBay. The thing is, this unit has option 0E3, 230 volts AC input and I purchased it from the USA. Probably it has been purchased in bulk and the guys from USA didn't have a step up transformer to test the thing so they just marked it as not working and put it up on eBay. Because, as you know, they use uh, 110 volts AC in the USA. Well, it's nice that I got a working unit for the price of a broken one. There won't be any repair video on this item. However, I can still do a teardown, cleaning and calibration of the front panel display. When getting used equipment, I always like to give them a good clean before installing them on my bench. As you can see, this unit has some residue on the plastic body so I'm going to try and clean that off with some isopropyl alcohol and wipes. The unit is also missing a, a plastic button cover which I was unable to find so if you know where I can get that please let me know in the comment section. I have turned the case all sides around and it doesn't show any screws so it looks like uh, it's being held together by uh, plastic clips and it looks like I might have to remove this uh, back plastic frame to let everything loose. So I'm going to try to unclip this back plastic frame. It seems to have come off quite easily. It looks like this front frame might also come off because I think it's also held in place with clips. and success. The insides of this power supply are quite clean. This supply must have been used in a, a lab environment because uh, otherwise it should have some dust or residue on the PCB but it looks really really clean. So it must have been used in a, in a clean environment. A few words about the construction of this power supply. Uh, we have a nice big heat sink on the back. This being a linear power supply, this will dissipate some heat when uh, we are dropping some voltage on the output transistors. We have the big transformer right here, which is mar marked 0E3 which is the 230 volts option. It looks like it only has one tap for the input. I can't clearly see that because it's on the on the bottom, but uh, it seems like if I would have gotten the 110 volt version, I wouldn't been able to uh, just rewire the thing to make it work on uh, 230 volts. So it's a good thing that I got the uh, 230 volts option. I'm going to turn this around for a second to show you the nice big heatsink we have on the bridge rectifier right here. Uh, this looks like a, a classic through hole uh, construction, a good quality one. We have some active uh, elements right here on heatsinks. The heatsinks are uh, soldered on the PCB, so a very rugged construction. The capacitors, uh, they are Nishikon so very good quality and the big and tall ones are uh, celested with some gunk to the PCB so there is no risk for uh, these big guys to uh, get loose 
due to vibration or shocks. And let me turn this around like this, so you can see the front panel. We have uh, Borns multi-turn uh, potentiometers for adjusting current and voltage. And this right here is the front panel display meter. Now it looks like uh, I'll have to remove the front panel and then the heatsink and the PCB assembly uh, will uh, lift off the back panel, uh, thus uh, giving me the chance to clean the back panel also. To remove the front panel, first it looks like I have to remove the caps on the adjustment pods. I will give this, uh, this to a clean tool. Next I'm going to remove this front panel connector. Hopefully the, now the front panel will just slide. These connections are uh, soldered to the adjustment pods and to the output terminals and I don't want to uh, be bothered removing those also. I will just uh, clean the front panel uh, as it is without uh, disassembly kit. It looks like the uh, PCB and the transformer heatsink assembly uh, could just slide out of the bottom case. I'm going to try to do that. Yeah, and it's done. Now I will not be showing you how I'm cleaning these uh, panels because it's kind of boring. But I am going to use some uh, warm soapy water and give them uh, a rub. And then afterwards I'm going to go try and uh, clean them with some isopropyl alcohol. But first let me also show you a side, a side look of the PCB. It looks like the transformer is using uh, some solid standoffs on this side and on the back side is using the actual heatsink as a standoff. That's probably saving some sense and then assembly time. And here is a look at the back of the PCB. Quite clean construction with just a few uh, flux residue marks. Overall, really nice and clean construction, which is what you would expect from uh, HP Edgeland. While well, removing the covers for the, these front uh, switches, uh, I noticed that the one which was missing the cover also has its uh, tip snapped off. So even if I get a, a replacement cover, I will still need to do some uh, repair work to make the cap stick on the end. Now for the calibration of the voltmeter, the procedure is uh, connect the multimeter across the output of the power supply, set the range push button to low current range, then adjust the voltage uh, until the multimeter indicates the full rated voltage and for the E3611A that is 35 volts, so I'm going to adjust that. Remember, I'm looking at the uh, Kitley multimeter right now and I'm trying to adjust it for 35.00 volts. Okay, that is close enough. And then there is an adjustment uh, potentiometer on the back of the display board so I need to adjust that until the uh, voltmeter on the power supply shows exactly 35.0 volts so let's try to adjust that
okay so I now have the voltmeter on the power supply showing 35.0 volts and the multimeter is showing 35.0 volts so I have the voltmeter calibrated for the calibration of the amp meter on the power supply you have to use a power shunt register on the output of the supply and uh, you have to have the DMM measure the voltage drop on uh, that resistor the resistor should be 0.1 ohms 0.1 percent I don't have a 0.1 percent uh, resistor so I'm using uh, just a 1 percent resistor that should be uh, close enough because I've measured the resistor and it is uh, within spec the procedure is you adjust the voltage and current control fully clockwise you set the range push button to the high current range for calibration in the high current range and then you turn on the power supply and adjust R31 potentiometer which is on the motherboard so that the uh, multimeter indicates exactly 5% uh, overrated current which for the ether 611A is uh, 0 0.158 volts so I'm going to connect the resistor and I'm going to adjust R31 so that the DVM indicates 0 0.158 volts now I think I also have to adjust the potential uh, potentiometer on the display because it's showing 1.59 amps so that should be 1.58 amps actually now for the calibration in the low current range you need to set the range push button to the low current range you need to have the uh, voltage and current uh, adjustments fully clockwise and you uh, adjust R32 which is also on the motherboard so that the DVM indicates uh, 0.089 volts and that's it for the adjustment and calibration of the ether 611A now I'm going to uh, assemble the power supply because I have the panels all cleaned I hope you enjoyed this teardown, calibration and cleaning of the HP E3611A DC power supply. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more.